Welcome back everyone. As you probably guessed from the title of the video, as well as the thumbnail and the B-roll footage that we have rolled in throughout the intro, what we're going over today is this guy right here. This is the Vortex Razor Gen 3 HD 1 to 10 first focal plane scope. So you guys have been asking me for this review now for uh, four years <laughs> and we're finally getting around to it. So there's actually a reason for that. So uh, this thing was introduced, I believe at SHOT Show in 2020. And then as most of you know, the world went to crap almost immediately after that. And these were really hard to get in and basically sold out everywhere for three years. So nobody could get these in. And finally, I got one in as of May of 2023. I have been running this on several different rifles as well as this AR pistol. This is just the latest iteration that we've had it set up in. Uh, literally four to 5,000 rounds through various different guns with this scope on there. So it's safe to say I have a pretty good uh, breadth of experience with this scope with various lighting conditions, um, various different setups. And uh, I can pretty much tell you everything you need to know if you are considering purchasing this scope. Full disclosure, right out of the way, this scope was sent out by the folks at Vortex for this review. However, they don't get any input on what I say and uh, they don't get to look at this video or anything like that uh, before it comes out. As you guys can see, the scope is uh, properly marred up, again, from lots of use, lots of drops, just lots of abuse. The whole time it has been in this zero gravity mount here, this is their uh, 193 mount. The mount has been solid. Um, it has a lot of sort of, especially in this particular setup here, some 50 shades of FDE vibes going on um, and just looks great all the way around. And it sort of has been the uh, top of the class, if you will, for one to 10 scopes. Now let's talk about that. Um, so first off, with a one to 10 scope, you have magnification, of course, from one all the way up to 10. And uh, if you talk to any sort of optics engineer, optical engineer, they will tell you that they want somewhere between a four to six power magnification range. So for example, what do I mean by that? So uh, the primary arms, for example, and lots of other companies loophole as well, make a 2.5 to 10 or a two to 10. So that would be a four or five magnification range. Uh, additionally, you'll see a lot of three to 18s out there. That would be a six magnification range, if that makes sense. And the reason for that is somewhere in that magnification range, you can get the best of both worlds. So you'll have really good, uh, a really good picture, a really good uh, sight picture at the, for example, the three to uh, 18, you'll have a really good picture at three X, you'll have a really good picture in terms of what you see, field of view, clarity on the edges, all of those sorts of things at 18 X. Uh, once you start straying beyond somewhere between that four to six magnification power in terms of increase of magnification range, uh, you tend to have issues. So for a long, long time here uh, in America, as well as Europe, I guess you could say, uh, those are really the two main markets for this. Uh, probably 40 years, you would see a lot of one to fours and two to sixes. That was like really, really common in terms of a low magnification power range uh, for optics. And uh, only in the last few years did you start to see the one to sixes, even the one to eights. And then, you know, in the last probably five or six years, you saw the one to tens. And the initial ones that came out probably six or seven years ago, the one to tens had some serious issues at the one power and at the 10 power. Now, the more current ones like we have here, uh, the Vortex, the March optics, there's a few others, uh, the EOTech uh, first focal plane optics have minimized the issues that you have at the 1X and at the 10X and have offered some features that some of the earlier ones didn't have. And I suppose even right now, four years after the introduction, um, I have a bunch of 1 to 10s and this probably in my opinion still is the benchmark for overall performance in terms of uh, do it all type of 1 to 10s. Now there will be some cons that I will get into here in this scope, but just know that when you are going for a 1 to 10 scope, as well as a 1 to 8 in most circumstances, you are sacrificing something at the 1X and something at the 10X. Everything in between, generally speaking, can be pretty good, but there's always going to be a sacrifice. So uh, I suppose with that, before we get into the details on the actual scope itself, uh, we do want to thank the channel sponsor, the main channel sponsor here, which is Brown Owls. I'm sure they offer this scope as well as pretty much everything else that you see here. Ammo, gunsmithing supplies, all of those things are over at Brown Owls they've come on as our main channel sponsor we definitely appreciate that uh, additionally this is going to be a mug club episode so 
today. We're going to be talking about this scope, everything that goes into it, the reticle, all of those things. Uh, but on Mug Club, we make viewer exclusive content that is censorship free, which certainly is nice. And uh, there's several other folks creating content over there. Myself, Stephen Crowder, uh, Alex Jones, Nick DiPella, the Hodge twins, Brian Callen, uh, and others that I'm sure I'm forgetting. There should be a code here on your screen that will get you guys a free month over there. If you guys want to try it out and see what is going on over there on Mug Club, it is an election year. And as we know, it's nice to have a place where I can actually say whatever the heck I want. Today, we're going to be talking about some recent events as when I'm recording this. We're going to talk about an update to the uh, conviction of President Trump in New York, as well as an update to the ongoing trial of Hunter Biden. There's some crazy stuff going on in both of those cases. We're going to be talking about those on Mug Club. And with that, let's get up close and check out the details of this scope. All right, we have switched the focus to the actual scope itself rather than me, uh, so that way you guys can actually look at something that is decent looking. <laughs> so back here is where we're going to start here. This is your uh, ocular focus ring. So what this does is it allows you to focus the reticle to your eye. Human beings are different. Our vision is different. And what you want to do is, in my opinion, this is the way I like to do it, point the optic at a clear blue sky if you have it, and mess with your uh, focus back here. Uh, until it is as true to 1x as possible, as well as as clear to your eyes as possible. Um, most of the reports that you're gonna see out there where folks have seen fisheye uh, effects at 1x could be improved if they change their focus here on their uh, diopter. So uh, just know that going forward, we'll talk about 1x and 10x here in a second, but that is where you want to set it. Additionally, here we have our throw lever. It is on 1x right now as where you guys see it. And I should note, it does come with this uh, ring if you want to, so that way you'll have your lever um, and it makes it a little bit quicker. However, you can bump it if you have the lever on there, you can remove that if you just want to use the ring. It has good ridges on there, um, but I personally have used uh, the lever the whole time and I do much prefer that experience as you guys can see here traveling from 1 to 10x is right about 180 degrees maybe just a little bit short of that and very very smooth in no way can you complain about the throw experience of this very tactile if you want to stop it at right there at 1.5 you want to stop it at 2 3 etc it's very easy to do and it stays there however if you want to go quickly 1 to 10 you can do that as well uh, the main body of the scope there is 34 millimeters so it is on the larger side what that's going to do is allow the hd glass that is in there to gather more light and just generally speaking it will give you more forgiveness uh, at the 1x and the 3x versus a 30 millimeter uh, scope it's it's difficult i'm not going to say it's impossible but it's difficult to get a 1 to 10 first focal plane scope uh, that is going to do even decent with a 30 millimeter tube uh, so the 34 millimeter in my opinion makes a lot of sense for this application just know though that that is going to require the 34 millimeter rings or mount which tend to be a little bit more expensive than the 30 millimeter that said this is not an inexpensive scope so if you are a budget oriented consumer this probably honestly isn't the best option for you uh, moving over here to our turrets, they are both capped as well as O-ring sealed. Um, so that personally is my preference for this type of scope. Some folks want their elevation to be uncapped so they can dial. Uh, you absolutely could lead this uncapped, honestly, if you want to dial it that way. This particular one has the EBR9 MRAD reticle. We'll talk about reticles here in just a second, uh, but it is also offered in an MOA reticle if you are more familiar with that. Uh, earlier in its life cycle, it was available with a MOA, excuse me, a uh, BDC reticle. However, as of right now, check in Vortex's website, it doesn't look like that is the case anymore. These are 0.1 MRAD for elevation adjustment as well as windage adjustment. On the MOA, you get 0.25 MOA uh, adjustment. Now these turrets are extremely tactile, extremely uh, audible. I'm not sure if my mic will pick it up, but I will try to get close to it so you guys can hear it. but there really is absolutely no slop in there at all. Can't complain about that. Additionally, if you guys want to set these for your zero, you can back the screw out there in the center, take your actual turret out and then put it back down. So that way uh, you have some sort of reference point if you want to dial with it. And that's true both for windage and elevation. One thing that's nice from the shooter's perspective uh, is that when you actually are looking at it, when you're on the gun, you ha have the direction of travel noted on the scope. This is something I mentioned in a lot of reviews. I don't know why every scope doesn't do 
that, but some of them do not. That is true for both the windage and the elevation there. So in terms of turrets, very good in my opinion. And again, a lot of scopes in this class are gonna give you a 0.2 MRAD or a 0.5 MOA of adjustment. So that, that allows you to dial it uh, nice and fine. So that way, if you're shooting at distance, you can make sure that you are on with your correct zero. On the left side of the scope, as the shooter sees it anyway, we have our illumination settings. It does have two night vision settings. Those are going to be one and two, and it goes all the way up to 11, just like an 80s rock band would. But what's cool about it is they lock in place. So basically you pull it out and you have a tactile audible click out, and then you can move it either way and it has an in-between position. So you can set it at the in-between position for whatever illumination setting you want, and then push it back in and then move it to the brightness setting of your choice. I do like that. I think it honestly is the best way to set illumination for any type of LPVO. And this thing absolutely 100% is daylight bright. Uh, again, we're gonna talk about reticle coming up next, but daylight bright for sure, which is a big help in terms of the one X on this. So uh, as we talk about the reticle, one thing I wish this thing had was larger stadia lines at one X. That said, I think the reason Vortex didn't go with those larger stadia lines is because they're relying on on that daylight brightness for the red dot. So if you have the brightness on, you really don't need the stadium lines, but me personally, I tend to leave the illumination off when it comes to LPVO. So I would like a little bit of a bigger stadium line. That's just me. Most of you out there will probably want your illumination on and not have to worry about that. Vortex has you covered in that case. Before we get into the reticles, I want to run some images here on your screen of both the 1X and 10X and just kind of talk about some things that you see with this scope. Now, what I'm going to say here is going to be relative. So like I was saying, in many ways, this still is absolutely the standard for a sub $5,000 1 to 10 scope. And I realize that sounds like a lot but there still is some cons to it. Uh, again, because you're just trying to move so much in terms of magnification range. So at the 1X, one thing like I was just talking about there, if they had larger steady lines on the side, I personally would like that. And the images you guys see here rolling in should probably explain why. It's very easy if you have a busy background to kind of lose those steady lines if you don't have your illumination on. Again, as I was just saying, if you have your illumination on, it's not a big deal. That said, your illumination can only last so long. And it is an etched illuminated reticle. So having that etched gives you the advantage. And if it just had slightly bigger stadia lines on the side, you wouldn't have to worry about it and you wouldn't lose it. So that is, that is my critique of the 1X, if you will. Then when you max out to 10X, uh, you do see at the edges of the actual lens, and I should be rolling in photos, like I said, However, photos don't do it justice. What you're seeing is a photograph of the lens here through my camera lens, processed through my camera, processed through my computer, processed through your computer or your iPhone, whatever you're watching this on. So honestly, uh, take the images that you're seeing here with a grain of salt. However, on 10X, what you do see is some chromatic aberration. And what that really means for folks who are new here is that you see some blue or purple hueing around the outside edges. And basically on this scope, from what I can see, Again, you kind of just have to take my word for it because the photos are, are, they are what they are. But once you get to about nine and 10 X, the image in terms of details, like if you're looking at a building, for example, that has square windows, uh, the details from like nine to 10 X get a little bit soft in terms of the straight lines, if that makes sense. But when you back it out to like eight, six to eight, somewhere in there, they're perfectly crisp, perfectly straight. Um, but that just kind of is something you give up with the uh, one to 10 versus like a, you know, four to 12 or something like that. It just kind of is the nature of the beast. Now let's talk reticle. Again, they do make an MOA version of this, but we are going to focus on the MRAD reticle. And again, it's first focal plane. So the entire time in terms of magnification range, it will be true. So if you're trying to hold over for whatever uh, your zero is, it will be true at any magnification range, which certainly is nice. I do dig that for most scopes. Um, if you look here on your screen, I'm just going to roll this in. This is an image uh, with Strolac Pro for 55 grain MagTech 556 zeroed at 100 yards at 300 feet of elevation. Uh, so that will give you somewhat of an idea of how it would work on an AR-15 with a 16 inch barrel. Of course, your load will be a little bit different. And one of the beauties of MOA and MRAD reticles is you can set this up for any caliber. It's not caliber specific. Uh, so that certainly is something that gives it a little bit of extra variety. Actually, one of the weird things about this scope that I I've seen is a lot of people run this on 22s, like match precision 22s. I'm not really sure why, but I've seen that a lot. Um, so if that is you, you can do it 
and that is one of the beautiful benefits rather of the uh, MOA or MRAD reticles. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of the reticle, I do want to talk about what is going on on the top of your screen. This is something I rarely see people talk about when they explain this reticle, and I think it is one of the most important things on the entire reticle, potentially, depending on how you use this scope. So what that is right there is that is the auto ranging feature of this reticle. So basically, if someone is 5'10", you put their feet at where that baseline is and where their head is, is approximately how far away they are in terms of yards. Um, so basically, if their head goes up to the five, they are 500 yards away, and then you can put your solution in, whether you're dialing or holding off in the Christmas tree, and engage. Additionally, the width of it there is the width of a uh, cardboard target, which just happens to be 18 inches, which just happens to be right about what the US Army considers the average shoulder width of a man-sized target. So if you have your silhouette there and side to side, it goes all the way out, covers the three there, it, that target is approximately 300 yards away and you can engage with your dope as required, depending on, again, if you're dialing or holding off in the Christmas tree. Now, moving down into the actual heart of the reticle itself, one thing that's nice is that the illuminated portion there at 1x it looks like a dot however as you can see there when you zoom in it is actually segmented and one thing i do like about it that is nice is that it's actually translucent so while it is illuminated you can actually see through it and one of the things i've talked about many times on the channel in terms of reticles that i like is i tend to prefer a chevron for like accuracy testing i do a lot of accuracy testing here on the channel it's sort of the nature of the beast and the chevrons tend to be a little bit better because you don't cover up your entire target one thing that's nice about it being translucent there where those red portions are is that you can still cover up your target and still see your target. So I do like that and I wish honestly more manufacturers would use that. On the horizontal line of the Stadia, you guys can see that we do have one mil increments and then they are marked at the even position, two, six, four, eight, ten, et cetera. The same is true for the elevation. Now, as we go down, you will see there that you do have the MRAD holds for your wind. Obviously, the further you go out, the more wind holds you have, which makes sense. Obviously, if you're firing most modern cartridges, the further you go out, the more you're gonna need those wind holds. And like any Christmas tree reticle, one thing that's nice about it is that even if you are off in your first shot, which obviously you don't want to be, but if you are off it, and you see your impact, it's very easy to make an, a correction on the go and make sure that your second shot is an impact. That really is one of the things a lot of folks like about these Christmas tree reticles. Um, of course, if you have your wind call correct and you have your dope correct in terms of elevation and where to hold, then you don't have to worry about your second shot, but hey, we're not all perfect. So it is nice to have that there in a backup. That short segment there is going to cover it for the reticle. Typically in these types of videos, I go into a lot more detail on reticles, but this one's pretty simple. It's an MRAD or mill reticle with a Christmas tree. There's not a lot going on. That's neither good nor bad, so it's pretty simple. And if you guys want to learn how to mill and range estimate and all of those sorts of things, there's plenty of videos up online. The crows are getting in a fight behind me. Um, but there's plenty of videos online that will teach you guys how to do that. Um, I want to keep this video as short as possible with the maximum amount of information. One thing I want to talk about that I sort of hinted at earlier in the video is going to be this ring right here at the rear of the scope. So uh, I don't know if this is uh, because mine is a 2023 production and most of the reviews online are 2020. But one thing I see a lot of people talking about in terms of the uh, actual 1X picture online in terms of the reviews, and like I said, most of these are from 2020, so I don't know if they changed it or if the people doing the reviews just didn't adjust their ocular uh, eyepiece here correctly, but a lot of people will say that at 1X you have some bending at the edges. On mine, I don't. Not that I can see in any way. I don't see any of that on mine. So again, I'm not sure if those folks who are doing the reviews just didn't adjust it correctly or if it has been an update with the Vortex scopes. I can't really speak to that, but I did want to mention that because I see it in a lot of the older reviews. Uh, like we mentioned there, there's pros and cons to this scope for sure. Uh, one of the Big things that I know a lot of people like is that red dot brightness. It absolutely has it. And most scopes that have red dot brightness are a wire scope. This isn't. And that's one of the reasons why it costs so much money. Um, so to get a wire scope that is red dot bright is fairly expensive in and of itself. Uh, to get an etched illuminated scope that is red dot bright is prohibitively expensive for most people uh, in terms of just the technology that goes into it. Speaking of that, this scope is made in Japan. From what I understand, Vortex is now offering a one to 10 that is made in America. However, it's going to cost more, as you can imagine. These are all assembled in America. So it has that Jap Japanese HD glass, uh, as well as all the internals that Japan is really known for in terms of making quality internals. Tracking on this, I should mention that I did a box test. It tracks 
perfectly, like literally perfectly with the turrets. So as good as any, you know, really high value scope that I have ever tested. Uh, so no complaints about that. Price point on this, let's talk about it. Uh, the MSRP on it is $4,000, 3000 3, 3, if I can talk, $999. However, of course, the street price is going to be less. Like I mentioned, uh, for from basically 2020 to 2023, Good luck finding these uh, below $2,999. Right now, as of when I'm making this video, you can find them for right around $2,500, depending on the sales that you might be able to find. So it is expensive, no doubt about it. Uh, one thing that's nice about that is that Vortex does have a lifetime warranty. They have the best, some of the best, if not the best customer service in the industry. So you can buy it with confidence knowing that Vortex will back it for you. A um, couple things that we didn't talk about is that it does come with a sunshade. So if you guys want to use that, you can. I don't know many folks that actually use that on LP videos, but the more important thing in my opinion is that it does it is threaded rather up here at the front so that way if you want to add a anti-reflective device on there for actual combat type use you can do that so that certainly is nice additionally for combat type use like we talked about it does have two night vision settings if you want to shoot through it passively and the one x is fairly forgiving uh, with night vision for a one to ten that is an important clarifier folks for a one to ten it's not going to be like an eotech or an aim point or something like that uh, you do, generally speaking, have to get your eye in the right position. Eye relief on this scope is pretty generous. Again, for a 1 to 10, uh, you're talking 3.6 inches. And really, the eye box doesn't get tight until you get right around 6, 7 uh, in terms of magnification. And then you really have to have your eye in the correct position. If not, you'll start to get some scope shadowing. Um, but again, for a 1 to 10, it's not a tight eye box. For a like 1 to 4, it's a tight eye box, if that makes sense, right? So everything is relative with this scope because there's always a bunch of trade-offs. Uh, that said, um, I will be doing a bunch of 1 to 10 uh, scope reviews over the next coming months to years because I have quite a few of them in the queue. That said, in terms of the actual shooting experience, the sight, everything you see when looking through it, the picture, the clarity, all of those sorts of things, this one is definitely one of the top options that I have used to date, again, for a sub $5,000 offering. It's hard to beat if there aren't certain things that you're looking for specifically. Like if you're looking for a BDC reticle, there might be a different one that you wanna look at. But uh, in terms of if this offers the feature set that you want at the price point that you want, then I absolutely would recommend this scope. Just know that the nature of a one to 10 is trade-offs. It's just built into it. Uh, by the nature of the beast. So just kind of know that going forward in terms of expectations, but the scope offers a lot, even today in 2024, four years after it was launched. So I think that's it. I think that's everything, guys. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can post those down below in the comment section. Uh, additionally, you can also post them at my various social media sites. The best ones are the non-meta ones right now. They're the ones that are actually up where I can actually see things. Uh, additionally, if this thing goes on sale, anything like that, we will post it up there. We will also post it in my daily deals email. That email goes out every day, as the name indicates, and you can sign up for it at the website here on your screen. Uh, it has eight of the best deals that we find around the internet. If it is in that email on that particular day, it's the cheapest I know of. Anyway, on the internet so that way it saves you guys some money and saves you some time because i've already done the price comparisons for you so yeah any of this whether it be the scope mount the pistol the ammo all that stuff can be in the daily deals email there's also typically a good meme in there which a lot of people enjoy uh, so if you like memes sign up for that as well uh, we also have another email list which is for folks who have subscribed who have hit the notification bell which if that is not you you can fix that right now by subscribing and hit the notification bell but if you've done that and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel you can sign up for the email at the website here on your screen this email goes out once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous month's email went out so that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes from my content which tends to be a pretty common thing here on youtube so you can sign up for that and you will get all of my videos straight from me to your inbox once a month so that way you don't miss anything in the future so you can sign up for that as well and with that guys that's all i have for you thank you all for watching i look forward to seeing everybody in the next video